Hey everybody, welcome back for another video. My name is Tanya, for those of you that are new here, and I'm a watercolor artist. So fall's around the corner, and I have my very first sunflower blooming in my garden of the season. So I wanted to snap a little picture of it and show you, and I also wanted to show you how to paint it. So I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, so to get started, I've got my Arches watercolor paper. I've got three Grumbacher paintbrushes, a zero, a five, and a seven. And I've got my two cups of water, one for cool colors, one for warm colors, and I have my Winsor Newton watercolors. All right, so we're gonna be starting with our center of the sunflower first. And you could um, pencil this out with the watercolor pencil if you want. I'm just gonna be using a regular water, um, a regular pencil. But if you did use the watercolor pencil, your pencil lines would dissolve once the water um, activated the, um, the pigment. All right, so we're gonna start with our center. And we're gonna bring up some of our, um, it's almost like a little teardrop. It's got a little point at the end. Some, and there's many, many, many different kinds of sunflowers out there. Um, the ones that I was looking at had a little bit more of a point on their petals. So we're gonna just go around. And you could do some of your petals like they're peeking out, um, you know, from behind the others. And I'll have this one peeking out. I'll have another one here. And I think I need another one here. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna erase this one here without making sense to me. It's a little bit too big. There. There, that's better. Okay, so we've got our center and then we've got all our little petals. So make sure that some are peeking from behind um, so you don't just have everything looking flat because you wanna give this sunflower a lot of dimension. So uh, the ones that are in the back might be a little bit darker, the ones in the front might be a little bit uh, lighter. So it just gives it a little bit of dimension. And then you can go on and put your stem and their uh, leaves are really pretty. They're almost like a heart shape. So you could do a couple of those peeking off the the stem here. And that's about all we're gonna draw at this point. Um, so the rest is gonna be watercolor. So I'm gonna be picking up my size five and I just wanna get some of my petals nice and damp, not oversaturated, um, cause then the, the pigment of the paint doesn't um, flow smoothly. You just want just the right amount of water on there. And I'm gonna go ahead and pick up, I believe this is my Windsor Yellow and my cad yellow. I'm just gonna make a little mixture on there. Okay, and I'm gonna let it bleed. You can help it up along the petal. Okay, and go ahead and do some of the next ones. Now I still had some yellow on my brush, which is totally fine, because this is gonna be like the lighter, um, the lighter petals. And if you wanna leave a little white space in there like I did here, that's actually, that's a really good idea because you're gonna to wanna to have a lot of push and pull of the, your lights and darks. So if you didn't leave enough white space, what you do is with just with a clean brush, you just go over it and dab it off on your paper towel. And then that way you know you picked up some of that pigment and you'll have some more, uh, you'll have some lighter spots on there. And you could do a couple of those that are peeking off. And I think I'm gonna pull in a little bit of my burnt sienna. And I'm just gonna have a little bit bleeding through on those petals that I just did. And here again, if it's not bleeding the way you want it to, help it along a little bit. Just like that. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and dry this and then I'm gonna start um, my other petals because I just don't want them to bleed into each other. So I'm gonna go ahead and dry this first. Okay, so those are pretty dry and I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start doing some of my other petals. 
again with the, um, I think I'm using the Windsor Yellow and the Cad Yellow. And these I might not make as light. I might make these a little bit darker. I'm gonna add a little bit of that um, burnt sienna in there as well, because these are the petals that are behind. So they could be a little bit darker. And here again, if you think that you put maybe too much, you didn't like the way that looks, take a clean brush and dab it off and wipe it on your paper towel and you will lift up some of that pigment. So this is gonna be a really, um, it's gonna be a layering process with these little petals here because you wanna give it a lot of dimension. And I'm gonna do a little bit more of that burnt sienna in the middle here on these petals as well. Kind of keep that round shape here in the middle for all those seeds, the part of the flower that has all the seeds. And I think I wanna add more yellow. Let's bring in a little bit more yellow. And I've seen a ton of different sunflowers. Um, some are more um, orange. Some are, I've even seen red sunflowers, which are gorgeous. Um, there's like a really, really pale yellow, almost white. So there's a lot of different shades of sunflowers out there. You could just Google sunflowers and a whole bunch will just come up. Add a little bit darker down here. All right, so I think we're gonna let that part dry and we're gonna go on to the stem. Okay, so what we're gonna do for the stem is, I'm gonna take my smaller brush, my zero, and I'm gonna be taking my, I believe this is my sap green. And you're just gonna to wanna to go over. Now sunflowers have nice thick stems because it's gotta be able to hold that huge head of the flower up. So don't make your stem too skinny. You want it kind of proportionate with the flower. So here I'm gonna go in and I'm just gonna lay down some water and it does have a little bit of green still on my paintbrush, which is totally fine. Filling in my little leaf there. So I laid down just a little bit of paint and then I'm coming in with some water, just blending it around. like that and then you can dab a little bit more if you want it to be a little bit greener up where the little stem and the leaf meet <clears throat> you can just make it a little bit darker okay so I'm gonna go ahead and let that dry now we are gonna start on the inside of our um, sunflower all right so I'm gonna be taking a little bit of my I believe this is my burnt umber it's kind of like a nice brownish, chocolatey brown color. And I'm just gonna go around the edges, and it's okay if my petals are still wet um, and it bleeds in there, it's okay. If you don't like that look of it bleeding through, I don't know if you just saw that it's starting to bleed through to my petals. If you don't like that look, then just go ahead and dry your painting first. I don't mind it bleeding through. If it starts to bleed through too much, I'll just take a clean brush and start wiping it off, or even my paper towel. Um, but I don't mind it bleeding through. I kind of like that look. That's the beauty of watercolor, that it just kind of blends together. So I'm just pouncing. I don't know if you saw that, but I'm just pouncing my brush in a circle because this is the seated area, and um, there's a lot of texture in there. I'm just going to add a little bit more of the same color, just like that. Really, really pretty. And I'm going to add a little bit in the center here, too. 
And I'm going to leave almost like this little white ring around it. It's not going to be white forever. We will be painting that in, but you want that to be a little bit of a lighter area of your seeds. There, I'm going to let that dry for a second. We will go back to our petals here. So if you think that you need a little bit more yellow or a little bit darker in certain areas, um, also I'm bringing in a little bit, I think it needs a little bit of my yellow ochre here. So I'm gonna be bringing in a little bit of my yellow ochre, maybe more towards uh, for the petals in the back. Give a little more dimension back here. Because the darker you make the petals in the back, your front ones will pop a little bit more because they'll be a little bit lighter. And you don't wanna do the whole petal here. I am gonna leave part of it um, light so that it looks like, you know, it's got some dimension. It's got some, it's like a little bit of a curve the way the light is hitting it. So you do wanna leave some lighter space in there as well. And I think I'll go ahead and add that yellow ochre in the center here too. I'm trying not to touch where we just did the darker brown I'm trying not to touch that, but if it does, oh well. And here again, you can bring it up in certain areas. So I'm gonna go ahead, pick up my sap green again, and add a little bit more certain areas. Like you wanna add a little bit of dark right under your flower here, because this is the shaded area. This, let's say the sun was hitting your flower, down here the stem would be shaded because uh, your flower would be covering part of it. And then you can add a little bit more wherever you want. Also, you want to just kind of put a little bit of a darker area on maybe one side of your, your leaf just to give it a little bit more dimension, like however the sun is hitting it. Uh, you'll have a light spot and a darker spot. And then you can just come in with a, um, a clean brush and just dab it around a little bit and mix it in. I'm gonna be bringing in a little bit of um, a different green, darker green. Let's see, I think this is my Daniel Smith. I forgot what's on my palette here. Yeah, Daniel Smith, this is Viridian. So I'm gonna be bringing in a little bit of my Viridian as well, which is a little bit more of a hunter green. It's got a lot more blue in it. So it's good to mix a couple different greens in there. And you could even bring in, let's say I wanted to bring in, I wanted it to be a little bit darker, I'll bring in a little bit of my Payne's Gray. You could bring in a blue if you want to, like a darker blue, just to shade certain parts of it. So that's what makes a painting look a little bit more realistic is the shadows and the highlights. Otherwise your painting looks really, really flat. So just keep that in mind. Always have some darker parts and some lighter parts. Um, if you want your painting to look more realistic. If you're trying to make it look more cartoony, whimsical, then you don't have to do all that because um, it'll be a little bit flatter. All right, so let's see. I'm going to go ahead and dry this, and then we're going to work on our petals a little bit more. Like, okay. Uh, we are going to keep working our petals. Actually, you know what I want to do first is just start covering up some of that white space. So I'm going to be using um, my Burnt Sienna. And I'm just gonna go around, it's a little got more, a little more orange. It's still a brown, but it's got a, a little bit more orangey red color to it. So I'm just pouncing the paint once again, because I do wanna leave some of that white highlight in there. Um, and again, this is a really textured area of your sunflower. So you, you wanna kind of leave some white space in there. And I'm just going over it again with the burnt umber on the sides here, that more chocolatey brown. And it's okay if they start bleeding together a little bit. Get a little bit more in the center there. All right, really, really pretty. I think I'm gonna work some of these. Um, you could leave it totally like this if you want to, but I think I'm gonna work some of these um, petals again. So again, I'm gonna bring in my Windsor Yellow, and I just wanna just deepen up some of them a little bit especially more towards like the middle of the sunflower here. And I got a little bit of um, my burnt sienna on there as well. It just kind of mixed on my palette, so, but I'm kind of liking it. I'm gonna bring in a little bit more of my burnt sienna. 
more towards the middle here for these back, um, the petals that are in the back. Just to push them back a little bit. See how that pushes it back a little bit? You just add a little bit of um, a darker color, a little more dimension. I'm gonna add a little bit here to my center of the, the flower as well. Wow, that's really, really pretty. Very pretty. If you wanna go ahead and add a little bit more yellow, make it a little bit more of a vibrant um, painting flower, you totally can. See, I just wanna add a little more yellow here and there. And you can play around with this all day. Sometimes I don't know when to stop painting. Um, I just wanna keep playing around with it. So, but if it's starting to look really, really good to you, stop playing around with it. Just have the willpower to stop playing around with it. If you wanna start another painting, because you feel like painting still, go for it. Um, but sometimes you just have to know when to stop. All right, I am going to work these um, uh, leaves again. So I'm going back to my size zero. Take my sap green. I'm just gonna go over certain little sections here. And then if you wanna do the veining in your leaf, the leaves that I was looking at was a big line going down and all these little tiny veins coming off it like that. Gives it a little bit more dimension. You don't have to do the veining. If you think that takes away from the leaf, then definitely don't do that part. Um, you could just Google sunflowers and just kind of look at what leaves, how their veining is going. There, I made them a little bit more pronounced on this some, uh, this leaf than that leaf. All right, um, I'm gonna dry this and I think I'm gonna just give it a little bit more of a uh, darker tone and I think we're almost done. Okay, so it's nice and dry. And I think I'm just gonna go in with my size zero. And I just wanna give a little bit of detail to some of these petals here. You don't have to give a lot of detail. So if you wanna make some like lines coming out, I'm using my Burnt Sienna, that more orangey color. And you could do, a, the leaves have, um, I'm sorry, the petals do have a little bit of like lines in them if you look at them very closely. You don't have to do this part. If you think it's gonna take away from your petal, definitely don't do this part. But I'm just gonna add a little bit of that burnt sienna line coming out very faintly on some of my petals. You don't have to do all the petals if you think it looks too busy. Just do some of them. That's really pretty. See, it just gave a little extra dimension right there in the middle. Now we did go ahead and leave white space in here. See how it looks nice and textured in there? I wanna, put, I wanna pop that center a little bit more. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take my, um, you could take black, you could take Payne's Gray. I'm taking Payne's Gray. My size zero paintbrush, and I'm just going in and adding a little bit more of a darker tone than that brown we had done, that burnt umber. I'm just adding a little bit more. I just wanna pop that center a little bit more. So wherever the dark brown was, that burnt umber, I'm adding Payne's Gray. And I'm just pouncing it on with my size zero. If that doesn't do what you want it to do, and let's say you didn't leave as much of the white um, specks in here, like I've got all these little white specks. If you didn't leave enough of the white specks, then you can go ahead and use this uh, Dr. PH Martin's a Bleed Proof White, which I do that um, once in a while. I would recommend using a different paintbrush. Don't use your good paintbrushes because um, this stuff is a little bit more like an acrylic and you wouldn't use acrylic paint on your watercolor paintbrush. So I wouldn't use this on my watercolor paintbrush either. You're gonna go ahead with a really tiny um, generic paintbrush. I don't even know what brand this is. I think it, it rubbed off, I don't even know. And you're gonna wanna go and just dab a few white spots on here, little polka dots. Maybe where the lighter brown, that um, that orangier brown, the burnt sienna, just put a couple dots on there if you want to. And it pops it a little bit more. Between adding that darker um, Payne's Gray and the white, it really pops it. If you wanna go ahead and add a few highlights to your leaves or to your petals and or your leaves, um, you could do that as well. I think I'm not going to at this point. I think I just want it 
just like that. I just wanted to add a little bit of the white there just to show you that it pops it a little bit more. Um, if you've got your pencil marks still showing through, you can go ahead and try and erase them. Obviously, once your painting is dry, otherwise you will, sm you will smear your, um, your paint. So wait till your painting is completely dry and you can go ahead and try and erase some of those. If your paint went over all of your pencil lines, um, you will not be able to take that much off. But if you want to go ahead and erase some of them, you can. The ones where the paint went over, it will not take off. But you can go ahead and try. Just be really, really delicate about it. Especially if you're using Arches watercolor paper. Don't sit there and, and erase too much because you will start um, peeling away your paper. It's such a soft cotton, you'll start peeling away it if you work one area too much. So you don't want to do that. All right, and then just gently rub it away. You can use a paintbrush for this, actually. I should probably use a paintbrush for that so the oils of your fingers don't get on your paper. There. So you just kind of got rid of some of those pencil marks. There, and I think it looks pretty darn good. It's very, very cute. Thanks so much for watching the video. I hope you liked it and learned a little something. And if you did like it, please give me a thumbs up and you can make a comment in the comment section. And don't forget to subscribe if you want more videos like this one. And you can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Have a great day. Bye.